Hi everyone, this lesson is on acute conjunctivitis. So acute conjunctivitis, if we were to actually break down the word conjunctivitis, the prefix conjunctive refers to the conjunctiva of the eyes, and the suffix itis refers to inflammation. So acute conjunctivitis is an inflammation of the conjunctiva of the eye. And acute conjunctivitis is also known as pink eye. And it's known as pink eye because this condition is characterized by a red or a pink eye. But not all red or pink eyes are conjunctivitis, so that's also important to make note of as well. Now, there are many different causes of acute conjunctivitis. We can break down causes of conjunctivitis into two main categories, infectious and non-infectious. So infectious are going to be viral and bacterial conjunctivitis, and non-infectious are going to include allergic and other causes, including such things as chemicals that get into contact with the conjunctiva and also mechanical irritation or injury to the conjunctiva. These are also causes of non-infectious conjunctivitis. But the main causes or the three most common causes of acute conjunctivitis are allergic conjunctivitis, bacterial conjunctivitis, and viral conjunctivitis. So we're going to talk about these three types in this lesson. Now, the most common type of acute conjunctivitis is a viral conjunctivitis, and viruses account for approximately 80% of all cases of acute conjunctivitis. And although this is considered the most common type, there are differences depending on the population that we look at. For instance, in children, bacterial conjunctivitis is more common, whereas in adults, viral conjunctivitis is going to be more common. And acute conjunctivitis is going to be a very common condition and is going to account for up to 1% of all primary care visits. So before we get into the causes and the signs and symptoms of conjunctivitis, let's talk about the anatomy of the conjunctiva of the eye. So the conjunctiva is connective tissue that lines the outside of the eye and into the inner eyelids. So it overlays the outside of the eye and then folds in and covers the inside of the eyelids. So the conjunctiva is actually a transparent and lubricating layer now, there are actually two types or two layers of the conjunctiva. One is known as the bulbar conjunctiva. This is what layers the outside of the eyeball itself. And then there is the palpebral conjunctiva that lines the inside of the eyelid. And then there are accessory lacrimal glands or accessory tear glands that are located in the conjunctiva and help to lubricate the conjunctiva. And then the conjunctiva and other parts of the surface of the eye are colonized by normal flora, including species of streptococci, staphylococci, and crinine bacteria. So this layer of normal flora can help reduce some infection by other pathogenic types of organisms. So what are some of those infective organisms? Some of them are going to include bacteria like Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza or H flu, Moraxella catarralis. So these three are going to be important causes of other upper respiratory tract infections and middle ear infections, for instance. Chlamydia trachomatis is also going to be another important bacteria that causes bacterial conjunctivitis. And chlamydia trachomatis is actually going to be the most common cause in neonates. And then the other important bacteria that can cause bacterial conjunctivitis is Neisseria gonorrhea. So chlamydia trachomatis and Neisseria gonorrhea are going to be sexually transmitted infections. The viruses that cause conjunctivitis include adenovirus. Now adenovirus is going to be the most common cause of a viral conjunctivitis. Herpes simplex virus is also another important cause of conjunctivitis. We can also see varicella zoster virus causing conjunctivitis as well. Some other viruses that are less common include enterovirus 70 and some pox viruses like molluscum contagiosum virus. And then there are other organisms that can infect the conjunctiva, but we're not going to talk about those in this lesson. And these include fungi and protozoa as well. So we'll now briefly talk about the pathophysiology. So again, we split it into the different categories of causes we talked about before. Again, allergic is one of those types of conjunctivitis we talked about. So in allergic conjunctivitis, it's not going to be an infective organism that we had listed in the previous slide. It's going to be an allergic response. So it's going to be an allergic response to some allergen like dust or pollen, those types of allergens. And there's going to be an allergic response and there's going to be histamine release and vasodilation in response to the allergen itself. So that's going to cause those symptoms of allergic conjunctivitis. And then with regards to infective organisms, there's going to be alteration or disruption of the normal flora in some way. And then there can be adherence of pathogenic organisms to the conjunctiva. So again, remember that 
we've got this normal flora of organisms that reside or colonize the conjunctiva and other parts of the eye. And these can help to compete against those pathogenic organisms. But in some cases, there can be some alteration or disruption of those normal flora. And then there can be infection or adherence of those other pathogenic organisms like we talked about in the last slide to the conjunctiva. Those organisms can then multiply and overwhelm the host immunity, leading to signs and symptoms. Now, looking at those infective conjunctivitis conditions more specifically, in bacterial conjunctivitis, it's going to be caused by an infection with one of those bacteria we talked about in the last slide. And typically, if it is an infection with a gram-negative bacteria, it's going to be more virulent or the condition is going to be more severe. So gram-negative bacteria are going to include Chlamydia trachomatis, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Marxella cateralis. Some risk factors for getting bacterial conjunctivitis are going to include direct and indirect contact with an infected individual. So direct meaning that you have a direct contact with that individual. Or if it's indirect, it could be where the infected individual has touched their eyes and touched other objects in the environment. And then that person comes along and touches those same objects and then touches their eyes. That could be a way to get this indirectly. Contact lens use is going to be another risk factor for getting a bacterial conjunctivitis. And then we can also see it with prior trauma, trauma to the eye, or a prior eye condition. And with viral conjunctivitis, this is going to be highly contagious. It's going to be even more contagious than bacterial conjunctivitis. And it's actually going to be contagious as long as the eyes are red. So this condition can be contagious for weeks. And again, the risk factors are going to include direct and indirect contact with an infected individual. So this is going to be even more key with viral conjunctivitis. And if a patient has an upper respiratory tract infection, like a common cold, or they're in contact with someone with an upper respiratory tract infection, this also is a risk factor as well as upper respiratory tract infections are associated with viral conjunctivitis. And then once a patient has that allergic response or gets infected with a pathogenic organism, the bulbar and or palpebral conjunctiva are going to become inflamed. So this is going to be an acute conjunctivitis condition. So let's talk about the symptoms. We're going to break down the symptoms depending on the type of conjunctivitis. The first type we're going to talk about is allergic conjunctivitis. So allergic conjunctivitis is going to occur bilaterally. This is going to be a systemic condition. The patient is going to have more systemic signs and symptoms like sneezing, runny nose, because it's going to be an allergic response. And because of that, they're going to have both of their eyes being affected. So they're going to have it bilaterally. So they're going to have eye redness. And they may have some conjunctival injection. This is where we see blood vessels in the whites of the eye. And what's going to be key with allergic conjunctivitis is itching. So itching is going to be the hallmark finding because this is an allergic response with histamine release. It's going to be very itchy for the patient. So they're going to be scratching their eyes and they could also be rubbing their nose or sneezing as well. And this allergic conjunctivitis is going to have tearing and runny eyes. And the discharge is going to be clear or watery. They may also have chemosis. Chemosis is where the conjunctiva itself becomes edematous. So there's swelling or edema. So you can see in this image here, the conjunctiva becomes swollen. And they may have a little bit of eye burning, perhaps from the rubbing or from the itching, but there's no pain. And then there's, again, associated symptoms because this is due to allergic responses to some allergen. So they're going to have mucus production and sneezing. And the associated conditions with allergic conjunctivitis include allergic rhinitis, so hay fever, asthma, and atopic dermatitis. So these are going to be the atopic triad. Now moving on to bacterial conjunctivitis symptoms. Bacterial conjunctivitis is more likely to be unilateral, although it could be bilateral in some cases. So again, we're going to see eye redness, and we can see conjunctival injection, so we can see these blood vessels. Here's another image of bacterial conjunctivitis with chlamydia trachomatis infection. There can also be itching in some cases, so it's not going to be a hallmark finding like we see in allergic conjunctivitis. They may have some tearing as well, and they're going to have eye discharge that is going to be more purulent. So purulent meaning that it's going to be pus-like. So it's going to be white, green, and yellow in appearance. And there can be so much eye discharge that a patient when they fall asleep and they wake up in the morning, their eyelids can be stuck together or what we would call glued shut in the morning. So all of that discharge can get hardened when they're sleeping and their eyelids get stuck together and they can't open their eyes. Their eyes get glued shut. So this is going to be a key finding with bacterial conjunctivitis. And then if you're to actually zoom in on some of this discharge, it can be more globular as well. There's 
Another form of bacterial conjunctivitis that's more severe, and this is going to be bacterial keratitis. This is where the cornea becomes involved. This is going to be more common in people who wear contact lenses. And in this bacterial keratitis, they may have eye pain, blurred vision, and photophobia or light sensitivity. So these are going to be more characteristic findings of a bacterial keratitis. And then there can be even other complications of bacterial conjunctivitis as well, including vision loss and blindness that may occur in very severe cases, and then in some cases, ocular perforations. Some of these more severe complications can occur in chlamydia and gonorrheal conjunctivitis cases. Now let's talk about viral conjunctivitis. The signs and symptoms of viral conjunctivitis can occur unilaterally or bilaterally. So they can occur on one side or the other, one eye or both eyes. So again, we're going to see eye redness. And with viral conjunctivitis, we're going to more commonly see follicles. So follicles are going to be these little elevated areas that we see, so these little bumps. So we can see this in viral conjunctivitis, but we can also see it in allergic conjunctivitis as well. There may be some itching, although again, this is going to be a less common finding. There can also be tearing. And what's going to be important here is that there's going to be a foreign body sensation. So oftentimes, patients patient's going to feel burning or a gritty sensation like sand in the eyes. So this can be something that can be noted as well. And then the discharge in viral conjunctivitis is going to be watery or serous. And in some patients, this eye discharge can lead to some eyelid stickiness as well. So like bacterial conjunctivitis, the eyelids can start to stick together, especially in the morning when they first wake up. But the eyelids are not going to be as stuck as they are in bacterial conjunctivitis. So there can be a little bit of stickiness, but not as bad as bacterial conjunctivitis. And we can also see preauricular lymphadenopathy. This is going to be a common finding in viral conjunctivitis. So preauricular lymphadenopathy is a swollen tender lymph node in the front of the ear. This is the preauricular lymph node in this location here. So that could also be swollen and tender as well in viral conjunctivitis. And there may be eye pain or irritation, especially if the viral conjunctivitis is caused by herpes simplex virus, but most of the time it's not going to have eye pain or irritation, except for that burning sensation or gritty sensation we can see with the foreign body sensation. And as I mentioned before, viral conjunctivitis may be associated with an upper respiratory tract infection. So it could be that a patient has a viral conjunctivitis first, and then they go on to having a upper respiratory tract infection like a common cold, or they may have already had an upper respiratory tract infection. And then once that has resolved, then they have this viral conjunctivitis after. So this is again associated with an upper respiratory tract infection. And another important point to note is that there is a more severe form of viral conjunctivitis, and that is known as viral keratoconjunctivitis. So viral keratoconjunctivitis is where the conjunctiva and the cornea are involved. So once the cornea becomes involved, there can be some other signs and symptoms as well. These include eye pain, vision loss or vision distortion, photophobia, like light sensitivity. So these are going to be similar to the bacterial keratitis we saw before. Increased eye redness, so it's going to be more inflammatory. There's going to be more inflammation. And the discharge here may become purulent. So the discharge can be more purulent in a viral keratoconjunctivitis. And viral keratoconjunctivitis is going to be very important because there is potential for vision loss from it. And it's going to be caused by infection with adenovirus serotypes 8, 11, 19, and 37, and herpes simplex virus. So a quick way to remember the different types of conjunctivitis can be by the discharge that we can see from the conjunctivitis. So with allergic conjunctivitis, this is going to be an easy one to spot because it is due to some allergen and there's going to be associations with sneezing, mucus production, and other atopic triad conditions. So the discharge is going to be watery or serous or mucoserous. So this can be something that can be noted in allergic conjunctivitis. In bacterial conjunctivitis, the discharge is going to be purulent. So we can see this purulent white, yellow, or green discharge, and the eyelids are going to be glued together in the morning. In chlamydial and gonorrheal conjunctivitis, we didn't talk about this in much detail, but the discharge is going to be slightly different. It's going to be mucopurulent, so it's going to be mucousy and purulent, so there's going to be a combination of the two. And then in viral conjunctivitis, it's going to be serous and watery. And in some cases, if it is due to herpes zoster virus, we didn't talk about this before, but if it is due to herpes zoster virus, it can be mucopurulent. And if it is a viral keratoconjunctivitis, we may see a more purulent discharge as well. 
let's talk about how the different types of conjunctivitis are diagnosed. Most of them are going to be by clinical diagnosis. So just looking at the history and physical examination, the clinician can often make a diagnosis of the different types of conjunctivitis. But more specifically, if we're to actually do some different tests and procedures with allergic conjunctivitis, superficial conjunctival scrapings may be utilized and this may help in the diagnosis of allergic conjunctivitis. In bacterial conjunctivitis, it could be again by clinical diagnosis or it could be by a bacterial culture, conjunctival scrapings, a gram stain. So the gram stain can help determine if it is caused by a gram positive or a gram negative bacteria. A GEMSA stain can be used to detect intracellular inclusion bodies from chlamydia. So if there is some question of whether or not this is a chlamydial conjunctivitis, a GEM sustain is going to be important. And with bacterial conjunctivitis, we're going to see high neutrophils when we look at some of those scrapings. And I didn't mention this before, but in allergic conjunctivitis, we're going to see high levels of eosinophils. And then in viral conjunctivitis, we can also do a culture in conjunctival cytology smear, only usually in severe recurrent or refractory cases. And then there is a kit that can be used called adeno plus amino assay to detect for adenoviral conjunctivitis. Again, this is going to be the most common type of conjunctivitis. And then we can also use a fluorescein stain if there is viral keratoconjunctivitis. So this can help determine the involvement of the cornea, this fluorescein stain. And we can see high lymphocytes in the conjunctival smear in viral conjunctivitis. So how are these types of conjunctivitis treated? So again, the treatment depends on the underlying cause. If it is an allergic conjunctivitis, allergic conjunctivitis is going to be seasonal. It's going to occur at different seasons or different times of the year, and it's going to resolve on its own when the allergen has been removed. In some cases, though, if a patient needs symptom relief or if they are continuously exposed to those allergens, nasal sprays can help, especially with some of those associated symptoms. Antihistamines can help as well. Cold compress, so Cold compression of the eyes can help with some of those symptoms. Topical corticosteroids may be used in some cases and then artificial tears. With regards to viral conjunctivitis, viral conjunctivitis usually resolves spontaneously within two weeks and it could be up to four weeks. And in the meantime, cold compress and artificial tears can be a supportive treatment. In some cases though, if it is going to be caused by herpes simplex virus or some other more severe virus or causes a more severe case of viral conjunctivitis, gancyclovir and acyclovir may be used in those cases. And then glucocorticoids may be used in the case of keratoconjunctivitis, especially if there is a lot of inflammation due to that viral keratoconjunctivitis. And with regards to bacterial conjunctivitis, again, this is usually a self-limiting infection lasting one to two weeks. But what's going to be most helpful is if the patient gets broad-spectrum antibiotic eye drops. So these are going to be topical antibiotic eye drops that are used. This can help resolve the bacterial conjunctivitis quite quickly. And then in some very severe cases, if there are systemic signs and symptoms from this bacterial infection, systemic antibiotics may be used. And again, this is going to occur in severe cases or in cases involving neonates and children, and especially for chlamydial and gonorrheal infections. Again, these are going to be the causes of very severe complications in some individuals. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.